was good. That was really good. High tech adventure. Just like we practiced. We are we're experimenting with some new high tech um, hydraulic systems in our set. Called bar chairs. <laughs> that are fun to play with. It's almost as fancy as uh, electric harmonics is new finding energy from the magnetosphere. Have you seen those? No, what are you talking about? I, I'll show it to you later. Okay, well, okay, I don't what? know. I kept thinking, oh, it's a new reverb pedal, but it hasn't been yet. Maybe it has. Maybe I haven't paid attention. So I, don't I, know. I think we're, we're going to talk, we're going to go deep into Fender amps for a little bit. Deep. So, but deep, not deep, deep. We're sort of, we're diving in, we're going to snorkel it. We're snorkeling. Snorkeling. That's we're, a good we're snorkeling. analogy. Yeah, we're snorkeling with Fender amps today because we are going to do some deep dives into particular amp builds on later videos but right now we just kind of want to do a cursory paint over because people are confused and we get lots of questions turns out when we we're talking about all the skews fender has it's not just guitars it's amps and it was right from the get-go it yeah, was we, right from the beginning so we're going back to the golden era of fender and their amplifying genius that has become what we all pretty much use as a template for amps from day one yeah you know from got yeah, you you can talk about the 40s, you know, but then getting into, we're not getting into that. We're going to get into the basics, the, the ones we all know and love. The ones that are good for you to eat and swallow. Nope. Um, from tweeds to black faces to wide, narrow, all that stuff. And so I'm, I'm going to let Jonathan sort of take us on a, a musical journey here. So Jonathan, take us away. There you go. So we know Mr. Leo was an electronics guy. He was... Tinkering with the radios and all that good stuff. So right from the get-go, 1946, Leo's designing. He's making amps. He makes those weird little champion 600, 800 things, which later becomes our beloved champ. He does that for a little while. Then just running through them, he starts making the big TV-looking ones with all the wide panels all the way around. And what are those known as? They're tweed. They're TV front tweed amps. So the tweeds are some of the most iconics. They're some of the most iconics. But that's not all the tweeds. Then we jump into wide panel tweeds, 53 through 55. The TV front was 1948 through 1953. Uh, when we get into the wide panel stuff, we got things like the tweed twin and the bandmaster for the first time. I feel like that's when sort of things changed. I feel like things got loud a little bit. They got loud. It got and, fun, gnarly. And those are amps, because I was just, God, what was... Was I playing a showman or at the guitar show recently? A concert. concert. I can't remember what I was playing. We're was not playing. there yet, though. Okay, we'll get No, to you played. What was the one, the tweed one you were playing that was so that, good? At the end, I can't uh, remember. There's so many amps. We play a lot of. But it, it all been reworked, and I wasn't sure if yeah. I wanted that. And it, was in, it wasn't well, the original it was, cab. We were close, though. It was close. There was about three. But anyway. So, then we get to wide panel. Wide panel at the top, wide panel at the bottom, skinny panels on the side. Those are things like, uh, well, we just said Bandmaster. That narrow panel is the next thing. That's 55 through 59. Everyone knows this one. It's the 59 basement. And that's, that's the amp that changed the world. I would say so. It's, um, and it's not, I, I always think that's not what Leo really intended for it to be used how it was used. Because, um, you know, you got to remember like back when he was building these things, he was building for you know, country, western, swing yep. type. Clean. Hawaiian. Sort of like thinking of this rock and roll thing came about. That was all, everyone, Leo included, thought it was a fad. Yeah. So what is powering these amazing little amplifiers? These wonderful things called tubes. And what is the basic tube powering of what we know as the 59 basement? So we got six V6s in those good old glorious tweed amps for the most part. And now like, as a basement lover, we know that those led to another amp design over in the UK that's very similar. Something called a Marshall. And that's pretty much a basement mod. The story I've always heard is that he was just using, you know, components with British values and, and valves, as they like to call them, instead of or tubes, um, that they had. I, I think valve sounds. Valve valves, sounds cool. a, val a proper valve. I, I appreciate that. What's a valve? Valve you know. state. So we got that going on. Leo is always innovating. So then we got this weird little period from 59 to 63. That's all the brown face stuff and the blonde stuff, like the blonde basement, the head and the cab. Uh, you got the brown concert like you just played in Asheville on Saturday. That was probably in that video. I, that, I that, that, was, that, that was a unique um, amp. I didn't love it. It was loud. It was really. loud. It was okay. No, it was good. No, I want to get in the piggyback soon. Though. Well, so that brings us to where we're going to talk the most today. Yes. 1963, 
64-ish Fender Blackface amps. Okay. Which is probably the most iconic, recognizable version of all the Fender amps, and, I, I uh, dare say. And what changed, like, let's just like, back up a little bit. So we have the tweeds, and like, now, I, I consider the tweeds to be the the ultimate for like an amp when you want breakup. Yes. And I, which it wasn't intended for. But so what happened with the black face? So, and even into that transition, going into the blonde and the brown face stuff, Leo was just, he was obsessed. He wanted cleaner, higher headroom. And, and in his brain, I think that equated to fidelity, like just, just higher fidelity sound. You know? And that gives us the birth of like the twin, obviously. All that stuff. So we get to 1963, and there are a ton of amps going on. 63, 64. I think I counted 12 or 13 blackface amp models, <laughs> which is why it gets so confusing when you're looking for them, right? You're on Craigslist. Well, that, <laughs> that is funny, too, when people will you know? get upset, me included, like when Fender has so many new products. And like right. They had that many back then. Yeah, I mean, was, that was sort of their... They got it honest. Their and there, there was no internet. It was just like... <laughs> well, you got your little catalog, your Fender catalog for yeah, there. Which was the internet. Uh, which was the, like the, the 1960 internet. analog version of internet. So should we talk about the good old piggyback amps Yeah, that's, that's why I really, I, I really love piggyback. Even though I'm a combo junkie with Fender, I've sort of, I, the piggybacks are just the coolest looking ones they have. They are super cool. They So the piggybacks, you had a Tremlux. Okay. You had a Bandmaster. Yes. You had a Baseman. Yes. You had a Showman. What's the difference? Because that's confusing. <laughs> Nothing. No. <laughs> so they just go basically in order of, of wattage, right? Tremolux was 35 watts. The Bandmaster was 40 watts. The Baseman was 50 watts. When the Showman came along, it was 85 watts. 85 S glorious watts. Sort of like a twin in head form. There's some debate, I guess, on whether it is just like a twin or what. But And I, yeah. I assume with that comes speaker differences, too. There are some speaker differences. Like the Tremolux came with a 210 cap. The Bandmaster came with a 212. The Baseman was a 212. The Showman originally was a 115. Ooh, that could be kind of fun, right? It could be kind of fun. That, that's, um, that's a lot of fun. And later you get two 15s if you had a dual Showman. We got that old Tremolux in the front right now. We do too. have an old Tremolux in the front. We like, we like old amps. I have, we have both owned quite a few, I think, of all those little piggyback right, heads. Right, I believe you got a little over there. 65 Basement sitting um, right to, that's what, to our left. Um, so stage yeah. right. <laughs> One thing I noticed about the piggybacks when I was looking over this that I had never noticed before, all had solid state rectifiers. That is a huge difference. Bit it's, of a difference from the combos. There's a little more push and not as much sagginess. Yeah, exactly. It's, so, if you want that, and the other big difference, I guess, the basement doesn't have trim low. Basement just has a bass uh, instrument input, has a normal instrument input where the trim lux and the bandmaster. Uh, and the showman they've got the normal channel and the vibrato channel and again like this this video it really is just to give you a basic paintbrush for the different lines because it is overwhelming it Here's is overwhelming what, like, when you're getting showman and tremolux and bam bam like what's the difference i'm so confused jonathan pretty much broke it down the big difference too with the piggybacks is like you have closed backs cabs, closed back cabs which that came a with a whole nice. different vibe um I don't really yeah. consider that's, to me. It's inevitably really, that that's not the Fender sound I want. That you think about, but I do love it now. But it's I want that. I like an open cabinet, right? Which and I have played all those heads where I just put them on my own open back cabs. Which definitely like changes that. things. I like that a lot too. I think it gives it that space that I want with my Fender amps. Like it's true. Because like, I'm a, people that watch this channel and know I love two rock amplifiers. Yes, and their open back concept is. I feel like two rock is just the. Ex the continuation of fenders, right? They, they sound like fender, but like the best fenders you can get in some ways. So I, I love how they've done that. There they, you mix, go. they mix little dumbbells and little marshes in there every once in a while, but it's all based on what Leo came up with. Um, so what's your favorite this whole little lot? Oh man, it's tough on the piggybacks. I probably got to pick the basement. The basement's got bigger transformers. It's fifty watts. I feel like the low end. Maybe well, together, that's something you just better. said. The bigger transformers, because that affects the tone. It a changes lot. everything. Much it? smaller transformers on the Bandmaster and the Tremlux. Well, and that's the and that's when when you're buying vintage amps, a lot of times, like, oftentimes the transformer's been replaced. And that definitely, even if it makes it sound better, <laughs> probably makes it worth less. <laughs> and, it, and it might not make it sound better. Why and not? It's um, you have to be careful when you're buying these vintage things. So oftentimes caps are all replaced, which is fine. Tubes That's are fine. usually replaced. I've seen the power cord. Transformers. You know. So, but it, and then I've seen ones, cabinets, tra caps, 
tubes, everything's been replaced. What is original anymore? So is it even the original amp? No. Like that Vox AC10 I, I, was, I really liked. It was, you know, it was the original cabinet, but it had been carved down, so it was a different covering. It had been in a fire. All recapped. Right. No original tubes, obviously. Transformer been replaced. Is it still a Vox AC10 from 1960? It, it is, but it, I mean, it's like in its guts, it is, you know. But yeah, that's that's a weird one, right? Because it, it's tricky. Yeah. That's, Where, that's whereas we have one. that we have that champ up front that's like 100 percent original. It is so dirty and definitely disgusting, doesn't work, but amazing. I don't know why the fact that it is so horribly dirty makes it so sexy. Looking, it's just better, but it is the more better, better again. The more, more dirty, better. the more better it is. Never, whoever buys that, we make, should make them sign a contract. They'll never clean it. Like they can yes. make it workable, you know. Like we'll get it working. But never, they can never clean. Now, my one of my favorite unicorns of this whole combo area is the Harvard. The Harvard's pretty cool. I think it's cool. And you don't see them very often. And it's a great little sort of practice student amp, but it sounds great. You get in the stuff that, that, you know, the Princeton's obviously as well, which is sort of the, the bigger dog of that. And I didn't realize, I don't think, how many combos there are. From just not even talking, just talking... This sort of black face, black panel, whatever you want to call it. Yes, era. this is a wide paintbrush we're doing right now because it is. We have to break down for other videos in detail about these individual amps and, and when Fender goes transistor, and then when Fender does some squirrely things too. And then we're not getting a silver face. No, we're gonna say there there are silver faces. That's it. We're gonna stop there. We're gonna do a whole other video on that. Yeah, we'll get to there and, and beyond. Red knobs and everything. But sh should we just throw out what all those combos that went with the not went with the piggybacks were the same thing? So you had a champ. You had a vibro champ. You had a Princeton. You had a Princeton reverb. A deluxe. A deluxe reverb. A pro and a pro reverb. A super reverb. A twin reverb. Then you also had a vibrolux reverb. A vibrolux for a short amount of time and a vibe reverb. <laughs> All, all from that, you know, in that blackface period. Some of those hits. were only made for a couple years, like 63 and 64. Vibra Verb was that. Um, a 115, kind of a weird one, but a cool one. But it sounds great. Yeah. I have a reissue of one of those. You do? And, and it um, sounds great, too. It sounds, it's the one that the, the Cesar Diaz did the model on for Fender, God, 12, 15 years ago. Maybe, if yeah, probably 15 years ago. Who knows? If that's, I can't remember how old I am. That's true. At this point, it just keeps going and going. And going, it's like I'm in a loop. <laughs> kind of like um, kind of like Ryan Reynolds and Free Guy. Fun movie you if you haven't seen it. It just came out. It's I really missed cute. it. I yeah, missed I, it. we went. We had a casino I moment know. there. It was good. It was very sad. And Derek's wife was showing us some pictures of houses in I think Budapest or Bucharest. Or That's so, what you want during a movie. I thought it was fantastic because I really like architecture. And Derek's like, oh, I can't believe she's doing this. I'm like, this is fabulous. I love I would it. probably show like random reverb listings during a movie like oh my god did you see this but there's literally no one at the theaters yeah, okay it's the safest place <laughs> so there you go <laughs> in the entire place like don't go to public places go to the movie theaters you'll be fine go support your movie theaters too like we need to keep those things around it's like go support concerts as well i mean it's true um, that just like we need to have those things like they i don't know how they've survived it doesn't make sense and like seeing a movie in there is better like dune's coming out I can't. I'm really and, like, and I have that. HBO Max, so I'm, I guess I'm gonna watch it on HBO Max. But like, part of me is thinking maybe I should just suck it up and go see it at the theater. Maybe we should. As the director of Dune said, it's like watching it on HBO is like taking a speedboat in a swimming pool. It's like it's not the same, and it isn't we the need same. To go watch it. Maybe we should go see. I don't see know Dune. if anyone else is gonna appreciate that the way you and I will in, in the shop here. Yeah, yeah, because you're a Dune guy. Yeah, I've read it. I've read all the prequels. See, we're, yeah, I've read all the Game of Thrones books. Just saying. All of them. Me too. And all of Jack Campbell's The Lost Fleet series. Side I have note. I've read those. Death, no, it's, it's definitely a deep dive sci fi. If anybody's read The Lost Fleet, Jack Campbell's his pen name. I'm mean, not giving him his real name because I don't want him to have fans rushing his doors. Um, amazing, realistic science fiction in the future space battles. Jack Campbell, The Lost Fleet series. There's a lot of books. There you go. Awesome. Anyway. So I'm um, back to Fender amps there for a minute. So what's your favorite combo of all those we just listed? I mean, you always see Princeton's, you always see Deluxe the, Reverbs, you always see Twins and Super Reverbs. I mean, the Deluxe is hard to beat. You know, it's like that sort of is the workhorse of all of them in a lot of ways. Pretty cool. I love a Twin. I've always had a Twin. I've always had a Deluxe Reverb. The, but the Deluxe Reverb, is it kind of captures... I used it for like all my Buddy Holly stuff, all of my Johnny Cash stuff. It just does any sound I need. It's chameleon. Yeah. The Princeton's a little bit glassy. True. Um, if we're talking the black ones, like 64, 65 style. I mean, the Harvard is my sort of coolest one, I think. Like, I want a Harvard. Um, 
But yeah, that's, um, I don't know. What about you? I think the Pro Reverb is a sleeper. That is a sleeper. I mean, Fender did the whole, you know, the 68 Custom Pro Reverb. <laughs> it's not the same. I was just dogged on you there. I was going to be no, I, I can't say it though. I just wanted to. I just wanted to dog on you. I can imagine. You're just trying to be hip. I am you, trying to be hip. a hipster over there. With your beard and your little suspenders well, that you wear. He wears his suspenders underneath his t-shirt. It's weird. I know. It's out. It's just a Gotta hold your pants thing. up, man. You know? It's, it's embarrassing. Keep a lot of things in these he, pants. Like when he goes to the beach, he actually, he, he does. You think I'm kidding. He wears suspenders with his jeans. Yeah. And I mean, they're cut off. No, I'm not a savage. Yeah. <laughs> because you'll see him at Myrtle <laughs> with his suspenders, which my wife is going to be at Myrtle Beach. So if you want to get um, meet Baxter's wife, Myrtle Beach this weekend. You just got to be at Myrtle Beach. No go to Hadwin White Subaru GM. She'll be down there. There you go. Eating Cheetos, most likely. I was going to say signing autographs. Cheetos. <laughs> but she'll be That'd be really fun if it was like her and a little bit. I just picture no, like a lemonade stand type no, booth. But if you haven't, again, sign, we're, we're pretty much done with the video at this point. We're having fun at this point. So if you're sticking around, thank you. But if you, if you haven't been to Hadwin White in Myrtle Beach, they have one of the, the Subaru side. has the best waiting lounge. Like they have, if you want a free lunch, free Cheetos, free popcorn, free sodas, free every type of chip thing you want. And just ask for Jordan. She's in charge of dispensing all the, um, that's her job. She dispenses all the um, foods there. So if a person was going to look at a Subaru, you're saying there could be free things like food and drinks involved. Yes, it, definitely. And they have the cute little Subarus that are super fast. And I think there was like a, there was a boat expo down there recently. And my cousin who um, owns with his, his buddy Tideline Boats, one of the coolest, it's like a catamaran fishing boat company. They'll, they'll all park their boat trucks there and they'll go get free food as well. Just, um, Jordan doesn't know this. They think that they're shopping for cars. They could, they could be shopping. No, but if you need a crazy boat too, that's, those are the best boats. They're, they're on, and they're, and they're the color of vintage Fender guitars. Oh yeah. What? How cool is that? Like you can get Daphne blue boat, surf green boat. That would be pretty awesome. You know, butterscotch boat. Can you get a Fiesta Red boat? I bet they do it for you. They're, they ain't cheap. Um, yeah, I imagine not. That's like what I say about my dentist. He ain't cheap. No, he ain't good, but he's cheap. I do the opposite. <laughs> that's all. I'm not going to say his name because he hates when I say that, and so don't go to my dentist. Um, that's all I got. I mean, like Fender Amps, they, send us all your thoughts on it. And if you want us to go like a really deep dive as far as transformers, you know, the wiring schematics and the, some of these things. We love that stuff. If you're interested, let us know. We, we would Tell us in the it. comments. Cause there's all sort of cool little factoids. Like you can jump the channels and all the piggyback heads. You can't do it on the combos with the reverb. Or you can pull a tube out and have some fun with that and like half power it and make some magic happen. Or the whole saga of the red knobs, which it's crazy. my stolen one might be, have been found. It's possible. This is just like when like, Peter Frampton lost his Les Paul. The red knob fender of Baxter's might be coming back. That's our sort of equation of wealth and importance. To it. It, probably not. So, well, so anyways, let us know what you think. Do you find all the different fender amp possibilities confusing or just fun? I think it's fun. It can be confusing. <laughs> let us know in the comments. Hit uh, that like button if you have not already. Click subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss videos in the future. We shall see you next time.